Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first off, I hope you have a nice holiday season, uh, and I'd like to make a special thanks to my subscribers. Uh, I'm uh, approaching 1,200, which makes me excited. Uh, make sure to like the video uh, before you leave. That helps out a great deal. And uh, those of you who haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe. Uh, I'm putting out several videos a week with good content, uh, especially useful for beginning uh, silversmiths and uh, also some good projects for people who are a little more advanced. So um, an extra special thanks for those people who've uh, clicked the Buy Me a Coffee link up at the top of my, my main YouTube page on the top right-hand corner. Uh, that really helps a lot. I appreciate it. Um, Stay tuned uh, in the next uh, month or two for news about my Patreon. I'm setting up a Patreon where I'll have uh, premium content available for memberships at different tiers, uh, including and up to some direct uh, silversmithing instruction with me on a monthly basis. So uh, stay tuned for that stuff. Um, today I wanted to do uh, some stuff about soldering and different soldering temperatures and stuff. Uh, I get a lot of questions uh, because I am sort of an unconventional silversmith in the way that I do my soldering uh, operations. And uh, one of the things that I like about uh, metal smithing is everybody does things a little bit different. And there's not really a right or wrong about this stuff. Uh, it's kind of what works best for you. And so uh, if my technique works great for you, then good. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, I'm sure your technique works great for you as well. So. One of the great things about uh, people doing things differently is that you can pick and choose uh, which things work for you and uh, and constantly improve your skills. So this is going to be more, mostly me talking at you, which isn't the usual type of video, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll try to include some good information. I don't think you need to memorize the melting temperatures and stuff that I'm going to give you, but at least understand uh, how they relate to each other when you're working with uh, various kinds of metal and types of solder. Um, so uh, let's start with uh, the various types of silver solder that uh, most silversmiths uh, pick from. There's, um, there's all different sorts of solder, but uh, first off, the, the choice you'll probably need to make is, uh, are you going to use um, sheet solder or you can use wire solder or uh, some people use a uh, solder called paste solder which is ground up uh, particles of silver mixed with a flux and there's not really a, a right or wrong answer on that it's kind of what you prefer I'll explain why I use the ones I do uh, a little further along but let's talk about the different kinds um, the type that I use mostly is uh, hard silver solder and uh, the melted temperature for that is about 1450 degrees Fahrenheit which I think is roughly 780 to 788 or something like that degrees Celsius, I'm pretty sure. It's, uh, it's got the highest content of silver of the various solders. It's 75% uh, um, silver mixed with some other metals to make the melting temperature go down a little bit. Uh, medium solder uh, is 1360 Fahrenheit and uh, I think it's about 740 degrees Celsius or 738 or something like that. 70% uh, silver. Easy solder is uh, 1325 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 719 degrees uh, Celsius or centigrade and um, that is about 65% silver. Um, they now have one called Extra Easy and it's 1207 degrees Fahrenheit um, and 653 degrees uh, Celsius. That is about 52 percent, or no, excuse me, 56 percent silver, which is not very much silver really. It's just barely half silver. Um, they also uh, make some various paste solders, uh, like I said, and those come in different mixes of percentage of silver and so they'll have different melting temperatures. And I don't really use paste solder so I'm not the best one to ask about that. Uh, from my experience, it's hard to find any that has uh, as high of silver content as like hard silver solder. So uh, maybe somebody can correct me about that if I'm wrong. But I haven't I haven't shopped around for it for a long time. So uh, I have some friends who use it a lot. The actual metal sterling silver, which is 92.5% um, uh, silver with uh, mixed with 7.5% copper, uh, 
we need to know the melting temperature of that as well if we're going to be using solder with it and that's roughly 1640 or 1650 degrees Fahrenheit or 600 no 893 degrees Celsius I think is what it is um, so the thing that I care about with this is how close to the melting temperature of sterling silver does my solder melt at? And you'll notice that as I read them that the hard one melts at the highest temperature and the extra easy one melts at the lowest temperature. So um, you might ask yourself why don't, why don't I just use the lowest melting one so I have less chance of melting my piece? And my answer to that is that uh, it also has the lowest percentage of silver and so solder joints will not blend in with the rest of your piece quite as well because they'll tarnish at a different rate. Uh, same way with uh, you know the various ones that work their way up to hard silver solder. Even, even hard silver solder is only 75 percent so it's going to tarnish a little bit different than regular silver or sterling silver I should say which is, is not pure silver. Um, however hard will tarnish the closest uh, and so the lines from your solder joints will be less visible with hard silver solder than with other solders. That's one of the reasons that I use primarily hard silver solder. As far as the, uh, the type that you use, the sheet versus wire mostly is, is what I pe hear people talking about. Um, I, use, uh, I use sheet silver, which looks like this, or sheet solder, which looks like this. And um, I think it's 30, 30 gauge or something. And the reason I like it is that uh, it's easy when you cut a little piece of it and you put it somewhere it stays there it doesn't roll around and <laughs> I've seen videos of people cutting little tiny pieces of wire solder and it always kind of amused me because they're trying to get them to stay still and they're rolling around I've even seen people do where they have wire solder and rather than just getting some sheet solder they take the wire solder and they pound it flat and then use those little flattened pieces of wire solder which seems to be way a lot of extra steps for me um, so I just use the sheet. Um, the other issue is that uh, with wire solder for me, and this always made sense to me, is okay. I'm just going to imagine that this is a piece of wire solder, and um, the way uh, the way people who use wire solder uh, solder with it sometimes is they'll flux their piece uh, that they're getting ready to solder to prepare it for soldering. They'll heat it up to the point where the solder will flow and then they'll touch the end of the wire to that spot where they want it to flow. And that's a good technique. The only thing that's wrong with it is that it's difficult to control how much of that piece of solder melts onto there because it happens very quickly. And so um, it's difficult to get consistent solder joints that way. Uh, a way you can get around that is by using a pick in the same exact way. And that is uh, picking up a piece of sheet solder that you've melted and cut to exactly the amount of solder that you want and then doing exactly the same thing, heating the piece up to the point where the solder will flow and then touching it there and it should just jump right on there just the same as it would. The difference is that I controlled exactly how much solder went on there rather than counting on my speed at pulling the wire away before too much flows on there. Um, so it gives you just that much more little bit of control and I like that. So that's why I use um, uh, sheet solder and also why I use a pick most of the time. So a um, couple of other things to think about. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that uh, people uh, mix up sometimes as far as solders go is that they're called hard, medium, easy, and extra easy. And uh, when people hear hard solder, they think that mean, it means physically hard. But technically they named it that reason because it's harder to use than the other ones. Although that is really not the case. I have not found that to be the case at all. It just melts at a little closer temperature to the melting temperature of silver. So that makes it a little challenging for some people. Uh, it gets pretty easy to use after you get used to it. One of the things I wanted to talk about was some of the different soldering techniques and philosophies that people use. Like I said, I do my soldering a little bit unconventional in that I use primarily hard silver solder. And there's only a couple of instances where I use uh, any other type of solder and that's just some uh, I keep a little bit of easy solder around. The two instances that I use them are when I'm soldering a spinner ring and I have to put the last solder joint on and I don't want to reflow any of the previous solder uh, because it may prevent the spinner from spinning. Uh, the other time is when I'm making a hinge and I'm putting the pin in and I'm soldering the pin in the very last solder joint. And it's uh, you want to try to avoid 
having the, the previous hard solder flow into that joint because it'll seize up the hinge and then it won't move. Um, those are the two instances where I use anything other than hard solder. Everything else is pretty much hard solder. So um, the philosophy that some people have as far as uh, using all those different kinds of solder is they'll, um, the idea is that you're going to use the successively lower melting temperatures after you've done the higher ones in order to prevent remelting the previous solder joints. And this is where um, I have found that, that to be an, uh, that's really kind of an unnecessary step. A um, couple of things to note about that. Um, one, until you uh, have been doing this for two or three years, uh, you probably won't have the torch control to not remelt those solder joints anyway because it doesn't take very long under a flame for it to jump from um, the difference between those different soldering temperatures. For instance, if you look at um, hard silver solder, well, let's, let's look at it this way. So I've got a ring and it's got six solder joints that I need to do. And so for the first couple, I'll use hard silver solder because it melts at the highest temperature. Okay? And then the next couple I'm going to have to do with the idea that I'm afraid that if I uh, if I remelt those solder joints, something's going to fall apart, so I'm going to use a lower melting uh, temperature solder, and that would probably be medium, which is 1360 degrees. So that's 90 degrees less only than the hard silver solder. That's not very much difference, honestly. And most people, as beginners, won't be able to prevent that hard solder from remelting because they don't have the torch control quite yet. So. And that's not an insult to beginners, that's just practice, you know, so that's one of those things you get better at over time. Um, then, of course, you'd work your way down the scale using easy, which is 1325, so that's another little more than 100 degrees below the previous one. Or no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not 100 degrees below, it's like uh, 35 degrees less than the other one, in Fahrenheit anyway. And so... Definitely, most beginners wouldn't be able to keep the ones above that from refloating. I hope, I hope this is making sense. Uh, so, the philosophy of not being able to, or not causing those solder joints to reflow uh, by using progressively lower temperature melting so, uh, solders doesn't work for most people when they're beginners. Um, but, and this is the reason that I don't bother with that. Um, most times, you don't have to worry about those solder joints reflowing. Uh, if you've designed your piece in a way that it doesn't have some huge, heavy thing that can be affected by gravity that'll pull it apart, uh, even if you reflow those solder joints, they are not going to pull apart. There's no reason for your piece to just jump apart if you, if you get those other solder joints liquid again. And the reason is, is that solder, when it's liquid, just like water and some other uh, liquids, uh, they develop a surface tension when they flow along a seam between things, so it kind of sucks together. And so it takes some effort to pull them apart once it's got that liquid suction on there. <laughs> and so unless you deliberately pull on something, it's probably going to stay in place. And so bothering with all these other kinds of different kinds of solder in order to prevent those solder joints, which won't move anyway on their own, is kind of a waste of time in my opinion. So. And again, this is my opinion, so I'm probably causing some people out there to, to get upset by what I'm saying. But it's really okay if you do things differently. I don't care. This is just the way I do them. So, <laughs> um, so that being said, uh, unless you've designed your piece with some really weird geometry where gravity will pull it apart, it will stay in one piece, even if you reflow those solder joints generally. So um, a trick that I use sometimes when I do have something that could uh, potentially pull it apart like that gravitational wise is that I heat the piece almost to the solder flow temperature and then when it's, when it's just on the verge of getting that solder to flow then I'll focus right on the solder joint that I'm doing right then so that it just bumps it up a few degrees over that flow point and gets that one to flow nicely so you don't actually get the other ones to reflow you just kinda get them almost there and then you focus where you need your solder to flow and it bumps it up a few more degrees in that spot which causes it to flow and stick nicely. So that's uh, that's why I do it that way. Um, some other things that people do that I don't do and again it's like I said I don't think there's anything wrong with 
any way you do things, as long as it works for you, um, is uh, people use uh, flux differently than I do. I spray it on and just kind of hose things down. And a lot of people are appalled by that when I, when I do that. But uh, some people use the flux itself to control where the solder flows because solder generally won't flow where it hasn't been fluxed. And um, so if you have some really precision soldering to do, it might be worthwhile to try painting it on in spots and not having the flux go elsewhere. But for most times, I can get by without having to do that extra step. Um, if you use the right amount of solder, you position it correctly, and you design your piece well, it generally won't flow where it, you don't want it to go. So I've not found that to be a problem. Um, some people use some uh, substances to cover up their previous solder joints or places where they don't want solder to go. Uh, I've heard people use uh, red rouge. Uh, they crush it up and mix it with water and apparently that prevents solder from flowing to places. Uh, I think I heard somebody use whiteout or something like that before, but don't quote me on those things. I think I'm remembering and I don't remember as well anymore. So, <laughs> uh, Last thing that I do differently than a lot of people is I don't pickle between each step. And um, that's because the pickling between each step is generally, from my understanding, the way people do, the reason people do that is because they're trying to remove any previous flux uh, that was on there so that the solder won't flow where they don't want it to flow. And like I said, that has never really been a problem with me. So um, that extra step of pickling between each, each of your soldering operations just adds time for me. And I have not found that to be a, a problem for me. So um, I think mostly that's what I wanted to say. Uh, Last thing, oh, there is one other type of solder that people um, sometimes get confused with, and that's um, oftentimes they call it soft solder or tin solder, um, and that is a real low temperature solder that's used by uh, plumbers or uh, electronics, and it doesn't have silver in it generally, and it's more in the melting range of six or seven hundred degrees Fahrenheit, so it's not nearly um, as high temperature as we're what we're doing. Um, and it doesn't shine like that and it doesn't have any silver in it so it, it, it looks gray basically if you use it. Um, I've heard of people using it to attach non-silver findings to things sometimes and I suppose you could do that but I generally don't use that uh, for jewelry at all. So okay, That was the soldering tips from Chad video so uh, I hope you found it useful. If you did make sure to hit the like button and uh, I'd love to have you subscribe. Uh, if you feel like supporting me financially, I have a uh, buy me a coffee link at the top right hand corner of the YouTube page as well as the video's description. And uh, check out my uh, website, it's cvpsilver.com. Uh, you could maybe buy some of the things that you see me make here on the channel. But uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, have a nice holiday season and uh, take care. Happy Silver Snake.